generic sadistic ones. Pretty much. It's the generic ones and then there's the sadistic ones. You know? To thrive in a breath of cruel intentions is to gas the eternal evil of mankind. Sh sounds <laughs> Shakespearean. But where I'm going with this is, you know, uh, in Trinitas, and not just in Trinitas, uh, my cousin's husband, you know, he, uh, <clears throat> he had said he had, uh, I think, uh, sleep apnea. <clears throat> I think that's what they call it. I don't know if I had it or I still have it, but basically what he said, uh, he would, um, I don't know if it's sleep apnea, but he had a shortness of breath at night and he, his breathing wasn't right accurate. And eventually, you know, it could hurt his heart, this and that. So they put him on a, on a breathing device, you know, uh, a small ventilator and he would sleep like that in the night. And then I just, you know, I, I was just terrified of that. You know, because they, my mom was trying to say, you know, that maybe I should have her something like that. And it's just like, I think Cynthia, uh, my ex-girlfriend, pointed it out that, you know, it would be good for me. Or maybe, you know, it, it was just like, it was a thought process I had. It was just like terrifying. You know, I don't want to go to that. I just, I want to alleviate, uh, you know, those symptoms uh, uh, another way. You know, there's got to be a better way. Like exercise, maybe working on my respiratory, uh, my, my, my lungs, you know, my breathing. Even at night, I was obese, I was drinking, you know, smoking cigarettes. You know, that's clearly got to be a factor. But, you know, um, I don't think that, you know, a hot steam shower would just alleviate that. There's a lot of other, uh, there's a lot of other uh, things I got to do, you know, I gotta, it's a whole journey, you know. But I was in Trinitas and it was daytime and they gave this guy, his name was Ramy, an injection to subdue him. Cause he didn't want to take uh, his meds. He said he's not schizophrenic. So they gave him an option. You take the pills or you take an injection. And I don't know if it was that. He just started, you know, he just started arguing. He started fighting back. You know, I was like, I didn't want to talk to him. We didn't talk. We didn't get in terms. We got an argument the first day he was there. The first day I talked to him, we just talking back and forth. Eventually, I just, you know, I was trying to let him know. I was like, you know, dude, don't fight back. Just fucking take the pills, man. You know, you, it's not that you don't want to go through injection. Like, you know, they're going to... They call it security, and it's an emotional thing. It's a psychological thing, you know. But then he, like, you know, they subdue him, and he was, like, daytime. He was sleeping. But I walked past his room, and he was, like, oh, oh, without a ventilator. It was just, he had, like, you know, he was breathing so hard. So I told him, and said, this guy, like, you know, the way he's breathing, like, can someone check on him, you know? And it's like, it just doesn't sound right. It's terrifying. You know, I thought about that. And there was another guy that he just, he didn't, you know, he wanted him for himself. And he would take the ventilator at night. Uh, that guy, Remy, I don't believe they put him on ventilator, but it was scary nonetheless to breathe like that, you know? A big, tall guy, mildly obese, not too obese, but you know, he just the way he walked, he just didn't seem too athletic or stuff like that. And maybe he could like, you know, dunk a ball, or maybe he could, someone, right? he just didn't seem like, he just, he seemed unfit, you know? But it was just, it was just that ventilator, or like that breathing device, you know, where it's like, you go to sleep and, you know, you think it's a time of peace and it's like, you know, it's terrifying nonetheless to have a certain ventilator or a certain machine that's plugged into the wall that relies on electricity to help you breathe. And then what if, you know, it gets unplugged or just disconnects or just stops working? You just got, you got to catch your own breath and you like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't ventilate, it goes in, 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 your, in your lungs, but it's over your mouth, you know? It, it's just crippling nonetheless, you know? At a time of rest, you know, you are subjugated to to a device that it terrifies you when you when you when you uh, go unconscious, and maybe you know you, you get used to that this and that. But I just don't want to spend my life like that. You know, I just think, well, what if you know I go to Virginia or travel with the kid? What if I want to take a, day, a daytime nap? You know, and yeah, that one guy. You know, when they put him on that, you know, the respirator thing for for his sleeping, so he didn't want to snore. You know, it's like they had to watch him. They had to they had someone there uh, sitting there watch over him. And I was just thinking, like, like, you're in here, but it's like, that's how you want to sleep. You want someone to watch you when you sleep. It wasn't directly in the room, but it was just still, like, you know, it just felt like, you know, you're a baby, like a couple of months old, like you're an infant. And you, even the infants, you let them sleep. So it was just crippling nonetheless to see that. It was just like, I, I, you know, it was just, I didn't even want to see. I didn't even mock it. Maybe I mocked it, but I was just like, oh, that's, that's horrible, man. And, you know, the guy that was on the, 
uh, on the respirator, he wasn't all that bad. He was just snore. The the, the former guy, the Rami, he was he was pretty bad. I mean, his breathing, like he could he even stopped a couple times. I was like, is he gonna suffocate? And like nobody cared about that. It was just like shocking, nonetheless. You know, um, my first experience with uh, the Royal Police Department in Trinitas, I, I started crying in their emergency room twice. Not because they hurt me and I couldn't feel my uh, feel feel my arms. It's just that how sadistic and evil people in the emergency room are. Especially the doctor. Well, he wasn't a doctor; he was a registered nurse, and the doctors and the nurses. And it was just like you know, I just couldn't believe it, and I started. Later, I started thinking to myself, the Holocaust is real. And then the idiots started repeating it, like the Holocaust is real. You know, like it was just a catchphrase and it was just a new, a new one thing. We, we, all the cool kids talked about and, you know, it was trendy or some shit, you know, Twitter. You know, it was just like so uh, paralyzing to, to begin with, to see people like that. Just, you know, no care whatsoever. You know, not just for myself. I mean, I understood that they wanted to hurt me. You know, but it was for other people. And it was just like, you know, people are on there shivering in the emergency room. You know, it was just that. It was just like how careless they were, how idiotic they were, how stupid. But, you know, the idiotic stupidity, I was just shocked. Especially the one guy from Elizabeth Police Department, how, you know, he, he, he told the guy, he's like, oh, if I didn't know you, would you, you know, would you still, you think you, you would run away from me? I'm like, bro, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You should get suspended for that. That one, I was just shocked. I was like, <laughs> you know how to make fun of that fucking little geek. He already made fun of himself. Including, you know, trying to hit on the, the person that worked there. And they were like, what are you doing? Leave me alone. You know, it's like a juvenile kid. First, you know, it's like, you know, it doesn't know how to uh, act in a social situation. So I was just shocked about that. But sadistic element made me tear up. This particular event, if I saw that, I don't know if I would tear up. I would just be shocked. I would be scared. I was terrified, you know. I don't like the guy. He didn't like me. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like personal, like, a, oh, fuck you, you know. It, even, like, people I hated, it, like, you know, it, hate is a strong word, but it tried to take my life. It's like, it's scary, it's frightening. And there's people that play with it, they enjoy that, you know. It's like, they will repeat coronavirus, because you could be on a respir respirator or something like that. It's like, yeah, what the fuck is wrong with your head? How evil and demented are you? And your husband is on that, and you're like... You, you you know that I see it, and you're like, you, you worship that. You think it's funny or hilarious, or it's a good thing. It's just mind crippling, but, you know, there's also, like, yeah, we have that technology, but there's also technology to help you alleviate that. I mean, yeah, maybe a steam shower, maybe just a walk, and, you know, I don't want to be the guy that <clears throat> well, you know, in the long run, you'll be better just, you know, don't take pills and don't put that on. You know, you don't want to hear that when you're going through it. I wouldn't want to repeat that to myself. It'd be like torture, you know, but the truth is, it does get better. You feel a lot better, you know. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I wouldn't subjugate myself to, to a machine or something generic, you know, like a chemical, Percocets or something like that. You know, to, to alleviate, you know, depression, sadness, or to perk me up. You know, even with a cup of coffee, meow, cup of coffee, right, meow. <laughs> you know, a cup of coffee, right, me, right meow this minute. <laughs> you know, it's it does perk me up. That's the caffeine, you know, and I'll, the withdrawal part of it is like you'll get a headache for a day, you know. Am I addicted to it? No, but you know, I had it just because, you know, I was slouching. I just, I just love the taste of coffee with brown sugar, right? So, you know, that's my thing. And like, you know, tobacco, it just helps me to relax a bit. But even that, without it, I don't, I don't crave it. And, you know, to, to, to be addicted or submerged in, in, in a chemical for reliance of, of uh, to pick your mood up, that's just that's depressing in itself. That's an addiction, whether you like to believe it or not. You know, to say, oh, well, you know, at least I'm high. It's like, well, you know, you're going through it. Yeah, yeah, I've been there myself a time or two. It's like, you know, I, I pop pills. It's like, you know, yeah, I can make jokes about people not popping pills. I'm in it, I'm in it. I'm not going to tell myself, you know, oh, you know, maybe I'll quit tomorrow. When, you, when you're thinking like that, you know, you're trying to fight. You're trying to fight, you know, and I, I understand that, but... 
to subjugate myself. And it's like, well, what if someone takes those pills away? And you never have any pill. You won't feel any better. You won't have any joy in life. Then, you know, you're really just dependent on that for, for your life support. Your emotional and psychological life support. Like, like, that, like you know, like people are with their, with their machines. It just, you know, the very thing that you chase, just maybe happiness, just a little bit of joy in life, you know, is taken away by the very thing you used to chase that to begin with. You know, same as the ventilator and the breathing machine. It's like all those pills, you know. And, and to say, yeah, it's why don't you, you know, do something else because in the long run you'll be happy. Yeah, it's, it's easier said than done. You know, but there's when there's other people stopping you, this and that. That's that was my maybe excuse. That's what I was going through, and just people threw it in my life. But eventually, they just the it's the journey that makes me happy. You know, like um, doing something physical. You know, and yeah, you feel better, you look better, but it's the process of doing it. You know, I don't want to be the guy you know, like I used to be on the machine and just do my reps, although that feels good as well. I want to be the guy maybe taking gallons of of water from a store. And just hold it a certain way like this, or or my with my wrist and just feel it, feeling tension over here. That that's me right there. That's what makes me feel good. And I could walk like I don't know, uh, seventy five hundred feet or something like doing with my left hand a gallon a gallon of milk, a gallon of water, a gallon a gallon of Poland spring water, you know, and just do that and don't put it down. Or I have two and just just pick up and walk with it. You know, I want to be the guy that takes a hand truck and moves something when people are like. Or you're never gonna move that, that's heavy. Or just pick it up with myself, get in a position and just pick it up myself for practical reasons, you know? I don't wanna be the guy that pops spills and then brags about, you know, doing like 230 pounds, lift, dead lift weight. What, what is that? But it's 15, 20 times, you know? And, and what does that do? Well, that's great, but you know, you were laying down in a certain place on your back. Even if you were standing up, it's, what does that do? What else did you do in your life that, you know, uh, prove that, you know, you're worthwhile to be here. So, yeah, I never, <laughs> the, the whole gym experience is generic. A lot of, the reason why I would like a certain gym next to me and, a, and another one, they had a climbing wall in one of the gyms. It looked really cool. It looked like a like challenge. And the other gym, it had a really big pool, uh, a sauna and a jacuzzi, which I just went for the sauna. They had the pool, but uh, it's a pool, you know, it's like whatever. But even with that, it's that's like a that's like a catch to get me sign sign up because I don't have a pool nearby that I could go swimming for like you know I don't make it maybe it's an even a quarter mile and that back and forth I probably could so it's you know it's 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 very tempting not to sign uh, to sign up but other than that you know the generic part of it even <clears throat> even pills or machines you know just to promote something it's just. It just seems unnatural to me, and uh, it just doesn't seem practical. Uh, to fall asleep, get rest, and <laughs> to have fear installed inside you, and it's just like you're chasing something that, you're chasing something, but you're depleting it at the same time uh, by the means of getting there, you know? The journey is more important than the end. Yeah, you probably get better rest, but uh, is it? are you conscious of, of like, you know, fear if the machine goes off? You know, and I'm going to point out how people in the hospitals, especially that I've been through, could promote wellness so the person wouldn't breathe like that, you know. There's so many things that he probably could have done to alleviate that. I know that. It's like they could have they could have Googled it and printed it right there. They just don't care if they didn't care. Why? Because, you know, he stood up for himself and said he's not a schizophrenic. He doesn't want to take his meds, that he doesn't belong there, that he shouldn't even be there. Because he was one of the quietest one there. Was he smart? No, but... He didn't strike me as the type that would uh, instill havoc in a schizophrenic and was a danger to himself and society. And it was just like, you know, it was just like horror show. And, and eventually, you know, uh, uh, talking about him, it's like, you know, those paperwork. And he, I started thinking, I started telling him that, you know, well, I'm not gonna sign this, I'm gonna cross this out. And he just said, I'm not signing this. And he just, you know, he didn't sign the paperwork. It was like a review. Which, you know, he got angry over for. And then a lot of people that started getting angry. There's like, it was fake and fraudulent paperwork, you know? But it's like, and after that, I think they started messing with him even more. You know, I was the guy that just talked about it. It's like, no, I'm not schizophrenic. I'm not logical. Uh, withdrawn, I left that one out. Just let him have it. Fine, you know, whatever. But it's like, at what point, you know, uh, from, from a personal perspective, 
you try to realize that. And I think I talked to him as well. I was like, hey, listen, you should, you should, get, you should watch your breathing when you get out of here. Not here, because they're not gonna help you. But when you get out of here, look, look into that and you know, try to uh, try to get you know, I don't know, try to research it and maybe uh, do something about that breathing because it's not good, you know. But it's like a patient has to do that. Another you know, patient has to do that, you know, to be like, you know, do your job for you. you know, I might have to tell you, you know, give me, give me your salary. Like I told the last guy, uh, an Amtech, you know, when he wasn't doing his job, it was a harassment. It was the truth. I'm more of a manager and a, and a psychiatrist and a nurse than you are. I just don't get paid for it. I'm not on the books. So the next time you want to tell me to get a job, go fuck yourself. I could do your job better. In fact, I already did. You know, oh, and I'm not, I'm not a fucking bum just cause I'm, you know, just cause I'm, I'm not employed by your fucking, uh, your suppressive, uh, evil empire, you know, and your suppressive mentality doesn't make me a bum. You're subdued and you're subjugated to this, uh, nonsense and your little, uh, uh, your little, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what is that workforce of, uh, to leave you mentally raped. I don't like to be abused, so, you know, the, the one that fights, I'm not a victim anymore. I won't be a victim any any uh, further in your little uh, world of, of pain and torture and, you know, anguish and just fucking stealing and fucking putting people down. I'm not like you. I stand up for myself. So, whatever words you throw at me, chances are you experiencing yourself. Yeah, it was just, it, it was just frightening, you know, whether it's a, not just REM, but sleep apnea or any, any kind of, you know, sleeping kind of, uh, maybe disorder or something like that. It just, you know, it does, it does bother you, even when you snore. So I think I still, I used to snore and then there was something else I was doing was talking in my sleep, but the snoring, it, it is irritating, but there's other uh, remedies to alleviate that without subjugating myself to a machine. 